Sir Isaac Newton is widely known for his discoveries in physics, mathematics, and astronomy, but he also had a keen interest in the occult and mystical aspects of nature. One of his lesser-known experiments involved the use of black mirrors, which are dark and reflective surfaces that can be used for scrying, a form of divination or vision-seeking. Scrying is the practice of looking into a suitable medium, such as a crystal ball, a bowl of water, or a mirror, in the hope of detecting significant messages or visions. Scryers believe that they can access hidden information or communicate with supernatural entities through this method. Scrying has been used for various purposes throughout history, such as personal guidance, prophecy, revelation, or inspiration. Newton was fascinated by scrying and wanted to test its validity and mechanism. He acquired several black mirrors, which were made of polished obsidian, a type of volcanic glass. He placed them in different positions and angles in his room and observed them carefully. He recorded his observations and experiences in his notebooks, which were later discovered by historians and scholars. Newton's experiments with black mirrors revealed several interesting phenomena. He noticed that the mirrors reflected different colors depending on the angle and the light source. He also saw various shapes and patterns forming on the mirror surface, which he interpreted as symbols or signs. He tried to decipher their meaning and relate them to his other studies, such as alchemy, numerology, and theology. Newton also claimed that he had some visionary experiences while scrying with black mirrors. He reported seeing images of angels, demons, animals, landscapes, and historical events. He also said that he heard voices and music coming from the mirrors. He believed that these visions were either manifestations of his own subconscious mind or messages from God or other spiritual beings. Newton's experimentation with black mirrors was part of his broader quest to understand the nature of reality and the divine plan. He saw scrying as a way of exploring the hidden dimensions of existence and accessing higher knowledge. He also hoped that scrying could help him discover the Philosopher's Stone, a mythical substance that could grant immortality and transmute metals into gold. Newton's scrying experiments remained secret until the 20th century, when they were revealed by his biographers and researchers. They showed a new and surprising side of Newton's personality and intellect, as well as his contribution to the history of occultism and mysticism. They also raised many questions about Newton's motives, beliefs, and achievements in scrying. Was he a visionary or a deluded fanatic? Did he succeed or fail in his scrying quest? How did he reconcile his scrying with his science and his religion? These are some of the mysteries that still surround Sir Isaac Newton's experimentation with black mirrors. Newton also had a secret passion for alchemy, the ancient and mysterious art of transforming base metals into gold and other substances. In the late 17th century, Newton began experimenting with alchemy. He wrote thousands of pages of notes on alchemy, which he kept hidden from the public eye. He also exposed himself to various toxic chemicals and metals, such as mercury, lead, arsenic, and antimony. These substances may have caused him to suffer from chronic mercury poisoning, which can affect the nervous system and cause symptoms such as tremors, mood swings, insomnia, memory loss, and paranoia. Alchemy was considered a forbidden and dangerous practice by many of Newton's contemporaries, who viewed it as a form of magic or superstition. Alchemists were often persecuted by the authorities and accused of fraud, heresy, or witchcraft. Nevertheless, Newton was fascinated by alchemy and devoted much of his time and energy to studying it. He collected hundreds of books and manuscripts on alchemy, some of which he borrowed from other scholars and never returned. Newton's interest in alchemy was not motivated by greed or vanity, but by a genuine desire to understand the nature of matter and the universe. He believed that alchemy was a branch of natural philosophy that could reveal the secrets of God's creation. He also hoped that alchemy could help him discover the Philosopher's Stone, a mythical substance that could grant immortality and cure all diseases. 
Newton saw alchemy as a way of purifying his soul and preparing himself for the end of the world, which he predicted would happen in 2060. Newton's alchemical research influenced his scientific work in many ways. He used alchemical concepts and methods to develop his theories of gravity, light, color, and chemical reactions. He also experimented with various substances and processes, such as distillation, fermentation, calcination, sublimation, and transmutation. Some of his alchemical experiments were dangerous and even explosive, causing damage to his laboratory and his health. Newton may have suffered from mercury poisoning, which could explain his mental breakdown in 1693, when he became paranoid and irrational. Newton also involved himself in a whole plethora of other odd experiments. He split white light into a spectrum of colors using a prism and showed that Aristotle was wrong about color being a mixture of black and white. He also built a new kind of telescope that used mirrors instead of lenses to produce clearer images. He experimented with his own eyes to learn how his vision would be affected. And he wondered about the force that made an apple fall from a tree in his garden. The same tree that became famous for inspiring him to think about gravity. He realized that gravity was not just a force on Earth, but also a force that kept the moon and planets in their orbits around the sun. But he needed a new kind of mathematics to describe this motion, so he invented calculus. After the plague ended in 1667, Newton went back to the university as a fellow. He devoted his life to research. He often skipped meals and slept very little. In 1687, he published his masterpiece, The Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, or Principia for short. It is one of the most influential books ever written. In it, he explained his law of universal gravitation and his three laws of motion. Newton was one of the most brilliant scientists in history, but he also had a secret passion for theology. He wrote more about God and the Bible than he did about physics and mathematics. He thought that the scriptures revealed the secrets of nature and the future. Newton continued to study the nature of light and color. He conducted many experiments with prisms, lenses, mirrors, and other optical devices. One of his most daring experiments involved inserting a long needle between his eyeball and his eye socket. He did this to see how it would affect his vision and perception of color. He repeated this experiment several times with different angles and pressures. Newton was deeply religious and believed that God had chosen him to reveal his secrets through science. He also studied the Bible extensively and tried to decipher its hidden meanings and prophecies. He was especially interested in the book of Revelation, which describes the events leading up to the Apocalypse and the Second Coming of Christ. He used his mathematical skills and historical knowledge to calculate the date of the end of the world based on various clues and symbols in the Bible. These are some of the examples of Sir Isaac Newton's very weird behavior. They show that he was not only a brilliant genius but also a complex and eccentric human being, who had many quirks and flaws. They also reveal that he was a product of his time and culture, which influenced his views and actions in various ways.